Hello, friends. Welcome back to English Classes Online. I am Benjamin. Today, the video is about the punctuation marks in English. We are going to look at how to use your punctuation correctly in written English. And this is really very important. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. You will find the red button tagged subscribe. Simply click on it and that is all that is required. If you click on the bell icon as well, you will be entitled to notifications whenever new videos are uploaded. And by the way, subscribing to this channel is completely free of charge. It won't cost you anything. And by subscribing, of course, you are encouraging me to go ahead creating videos that will be useful to a lot of people out there. So kindly subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Let's get started with the uh, topic right away. Punctuation marks in English, how to use punctuation correctly. That's the focus of today's video. And the first thing we need to find out is why do we really need punctuation marks? Well, of course, since in speech, we use various intonation marks, pauses, gestures, facial expression, we use all these to convey meanings and to lay emphasis on what we are saying. But in writing, we have the option of using punctuation marks to help our readers understand what we mean from what they read. It is true punctuation we show the readers where to pause or stop. Punctuation we show the readers exactly whether what is being said is a statement, a question, or an exclamation. This means that the appropriate use of punctuation marks is an essential prerequisite for success in writing. That, of course, is why we are devoting this video to discussing the various punctuation marks and how to use them correctly. Now, having said this, Let's look at the punctuation marks at a glance. Here, of course, you can see you can see the various punctuation marks, beginning with the full stop. Yeah, British English calls it full stop, and American English calls it period. Then you have the comma, you have the colon, which is the two dots. Then you have the semicolon, the question mark the round brackets, the square brackets. Then you have the quotation marks, opening and closing. You have the apostrophe. You have the ellipsis points. You have the exclamation marks. You have the underline, the hyphen, and so on. Well, we shall discuss the most important of these uh, punctuation marks. But let's uh, take a look at the punctuation marks at a glance. Now you can see the comma here, and you can see an example. She is a clever, healthy woman. So a comma, you know, breaks uh, a comma introduces a break between clever and healthy. So here we have two adjectives modifying the noun woman. And so a comma 
introduces a slight pause there. Then we have the full stop. I, I am writing for the day you will be back. I am waiting rather for the day you will be back. Now, the full stop is an end mark and it always comes at the end of a declarative sentence. So of course you can see it there. Okay. Now let's look at the colon. The colon is two dots. Samuel plays four spots. And then the colon introduces the information, the details that follow. Samuel plays four sports, colon, volleyball, soccer, and tennis. All right, so you can see um, that the colon introduces uh, some information that will follow. Then we have the exclamation mark. Yes, you will come with me. An exclamation mark is always used when we express a very powerful emotion. When we express strong feelings, the exclamation mark is used. Then the question mark, how much paper will they need? See, at the end of every question, you put a question mark. Then you have the at sign, this here, my email address, mary at gmail.com. You see at, of course, uh, with the advent of social media and the internet, uh, people are now very conversant with this at sign. Then we have the apostrophe. We have the apostrophe that does a lot of functions indicating possession and also indicating contraction. But here we have, there are two eights in 808. So here we are looking at, you know, the use of apostrophe in this unique manner. Ellipsis mark, today you have ellipsis, we started new work, all right? So uh, ellipsis indicates a missing item that is deliberately uh, indicated with an ellipsis mark there. Then you have the quotation marks when you are, you know, uh, writing the direct words of a speaker. I am very tired, she said. Now you are quoting someone, you know, saying the direct words of the speaker and so you use the quotation marks. Then you have the slash, you know, free ticket will be given to children slash women only. So you can see how slash is used. Underline, the meeting will be, will be, will be started or the meeting will start at 08.00 p.m. You underline it for emphasis. All right, to draw the attention of the reader to the specific information that he or she ought to pay more attention to. Then we have the square brackets. Eat, then square bracket, apple is usually useful fruit. All right, so we shall be looking at the various quotation marks, but this will give you uh, the overview of the punctuation marks. Then we take a look at this, you know, the punctuation marks at a glance once again. The essence of this is for emphasis. I want you to have a very clear understanding of these punctuation marks, what they are and how they are used. So the punctuation marks at a glance, three. We have the full stop again, you see, it is used at the end of a sentence. We have the comma, 
It is used to separate items in a series, but there are other uses, of course, which we shall discuss. The colon is used to introduce a list. The semicolon is used to join independent clauses. Of course, when you have a compound sentence, then you have the option of using, uh, using a conjunction or using a semicolon. If you want to say, for instance, Mary is a student and she is a trader, for example, all right? Probably she is a part-time student and a part-time trader. Now, you have the option of joining the two independent clauses with uh, a conjunction. And Mary is a student and she is also a trader. You can decide to use the semicolon. So you can say, Mary is a student, semicolon. She is also a trader. So that's the use of the semicolon. Then we have the question mark, and it is used to show uh, that something is a question. Whenever you ask a question, are you a British question mark? Do you speak French fluently question mark? All right, so then you have the exclamation. The exclamation mark comes after an exclamation. When you express very powerful feelings, feelings of anger, feelings of excitement, feelings of joy, and so on and so forth. If someone steps on your toe and you say, ouch, you put a, an exclamation mark. Ouch, you've stepped on my toe. If you are happy, you can say, wow, surprise or admiration. Then slash, once again, is used to separate letters, numbers, etc. The apostrophe is used to show a letter or a number, uh, when a letter or a number has been left out, is also used to show possession. Now, the at sign, of course, is used in the email address. For example, my email address is if I benji1 at gmail.com. So whenever one in, someone indicates, um, you know, an email address, the at is used there. Then we have seen the ellipses. One or more words have been in, intentionally left out. So the ellipsis mark is used. Then the round brackets is, you are used to add extra information to a sentence, while the quotation marks are used to indicate a phrase um, to show that someone else has written or said it. It could be a phrase, a clause, or a sentence. All right? So these are the punctuation marks at a glance. All right, let's proceed. Then again, let's again look at the punctuation marks. Beginning with the full stop once again, as I earlier mentioned, the full stop is used at the end of a sentence. The question mark used at the end of an interrogative sentence to form a question. The comma is used to denote a pause in a sentence. The exclamation mark is used to denote shock, surprise, anger, or a raised voice. The quotation mark is used to show or indicate the direct words of the speaker. Then the colon is used to indicate what follows, probably a list or some detailed information. The semicolon is used to link two independent clauses, while the apostrophe is used to show possession or contraction of a word. All right, so these are the punctuation marks once again. And I have told you the essence of repeating them. But then here we come to the end marks. Among these quotation marks 
Three of them are known as end marks. They are called end marks because they are used at the end of a sentence. And there are different types of sentences that are ended with these various end marks. Now, let's begin with the full stop, which is the most common. The full stop is used to end a declarative sentence. A declarative sentence is a statement. For example, love makes the world go round. You have made a statement, all right? It's a declaration. When you make a declaration, when you give information, that is a declarative sentence. Then the second example, your writing is hard to read. Then this statement ends with a full stop. Another use of the full stop is after titles, of course, in American English, uh, he owes a lot of money to Mr. Smith. So after Mr., which is an abbreviation, then you put a full stop. Then DR, which is the abbreviation of doctor. Dr. Smith instructs us in botany. So DR, full stop, to indicate that it is an abbreviation. The full stop is also used in numbers. Retail sales fell by 1.3% in January. You know, 1.3%. This point is represented by a full stop. Number four, following an abbreviation. That, of course, had earlier been mentioned. The price must be more realistic, i.e. lower i.e. is an abbreviation, so you indicate this abbreviation with dots. Then the question mark is used at the end of every question. For example, you end the question, a direct question. Do you like coffee? Then question mark. What are you doing? Question mark. All right, you can see these two Questions, do you like coffee? What are you doing? These are questions and it is always proper to end each question with a question mark. Most students, of course, commit errors and lose marks in English exams when they omit the question mark. Number two, to end a tag question, he finished on time, didn't he? So that's another type of question. That's the tag question. They are not doing very well, are they? So different types of questions, but each type of question has to end with a question mark. That indicates that it is really a question. Number three, it is used to express uncertainty. He is sick, you are not sure whether he is actually sick or not. So you use a question mark to indicate your uncertainty about this piece of information. So you are not really certain, you know, he is sick. I saw him going out this morning, you know, so that's to indicate uncertainty. Number four, in a series of questions, is it good in form, style, meaning, all right, so you use questions to indicate series of questions in the manner exemplified here. Then uh, exclamation mark. First, it is used to demonstrate strong feelings, powerful emotions. Ah, there you are. You can see the exclamation mark after ah, there you are another exclamation mark. Ah, it's eating my leg, you know. So that's an expression of pain, probably. Then when you give a command and you do that with some measure of force, you bring emphasis into it, sit down, you know, an exclamation mark is appropriate. Stop, you know appropriation, uh, I mean exclamation mark. Then you use 
exclamation mark when you want to show emphasis. Hey, he shouted at the passerby, you know, you want to draw someone's attention, uh, you know, uh, because it is really very important that you gain the fellow's attention, probably it's urgent. So you say, hey, and the uh, exclamation mark is used here for emphasis. Again, the exclamation mark is used to show amusement. They thought I was the hired clown. You know, that's uh, to show amusement. So these are the various uses of the end marks. And among all the uh, punctuation marks, we have three end marks, the full stop, the exclamation mark, and the question mark. And we have been able to look at them one by one. Then let's look at the end marks. And uh, again, have a review of the kinds, the types of sentences that we use them for. As already mentioned, in declarative sentences, you use the full stop or the period. And as I earlier said, the British call it full stop, the Americans call it period. Now, for example, he came here today and then we went out immediately. This is a declarative sentence. So at the end of it, you put a full stop. I also studied during the day. So I finished my work in a short time. This is a declarative sentence. It ends with a full stop. Ali came with me today. So I was able to return home immediately. Another declarative sentence, so it ends with a full stop. Then comes the imperative sentence. An imperative sentence is a command or an order, and it also ends with a full stop. For example, just go home and bring me my favorite bag from home. This is a command. It's an imperative sentence, so you end it with a full stop. Nobody should talk to me after this time. You are giving a, a clear instruction. It's a command you are giving to your subordinates. Nobody should talk to me after this time. All right, full stop. No one should come here nowadays. It has become much more dangerous than before, full stop. Then the next is the interrogative sentence. And an interrogative sentence is a question and it ends with a question mark. For example, why haven't you spoken a word with me for how many days uh, you have been with me? That's a question. So it ends with a question mark. How many people have you met these days? Question mark. You look extremely pale. Are you sick? That's a question too. It ends with a question mark. Then comes the last type of sentence uh, using the end mark here. And that's the exclamatory sentence. It's called an interjection, a sentence that expresses some powerful feelings. For example, hey, I burned my hands. I burned my hands. So a quotation, I mean uh, an exclamation mark. Cycling uphill from this hill is really dangerous. You know, you have put some emotion into that, uh, that expression. So you put a question mark. I didn't know when to do, uh, I didn't know what to do when I saw this gift. I was really happy, you know, exclamation mark, because you are expressing your happiness, all right? Expressing the feelings of happiness. So whenever you make a statement that expresses some powerful feelings, you indicate that with uh, an exclamation mark. Then let's go now into the specific uses. 
detailed uses of the various punctuation marks. Let's start with the uses of the full stop or period. You know, at the end of a declarative sentence, this we have already mentioned. For example, there is no place that, like home. So this is a declarative sentence. And so you end it with a question mark. All right. Love makes the world go round. Full stop. Then after titles in American English, for example, he owes a lot of money to Mr. Smith. You can see exactly here. After Mr., which is abbreviated uh, as MR, then full stop follows. And in this case, when we uh, indicate uh, with a full stop is usually applies to abbreviations that are formed, you know, when you take the first letter of a word and the last letter of a word, then that uh, kind of abbreviation requires a full stop. Uh, another example is doctor, you know, doctor begins with D and ends with R, and that's why we abbreviate it as DR. And so we put a full stop after DR. For example, Dr. Smith instructs us in botany. In numbers, retail sales fell by 1.3% in January. We have come across this. Another example, the average price of goods rose by just 2.2%. Uh, then again, following abbreviation, they were arrested on April 20, 1980. When we abbreviate April to APR, then we can indicate with a full stop. We are mutual friends, enemies, ETC. ETC is an abbreviation, so we end that with a full stop. Then another use of the full stop is to end an unconventional sentence. He was not allowed to do that. Not while he was the leader of the group. So you see, not while he was the leader of the group. So it's an unconventional sentence, but in some cases, a writer decides to use that. So it also ends with a full stop. Okay, so let's look at the uses of the question mark. We use the question mark to end the direct question as we earlier saw. For example, have you seen the film yet? That's a question. It ends with a question mark. What are you doing? Question mark. We use it also to indicate uncertainty as I earlier mentioned. For example, John was born in 1988. Then when we put a question mark in brackets here, we are indicating that we are not sure uh, if John was actually born in 1988. But we are suggesting that he was born in 1988. So we use a question mark there to indicate or to show uncertainty to show that we are really not sure. Another example, he is sick. I saw him going out this morning. He is sick. We put a question mark because we are raising some uh, doubt over this. Is he really sick? You know? All right. So another use of the question mark is in a series of questions. Is it good in form, question mark, style, question mark, meaning, question mark? You know, these are a series of questions. He's been hospitalized. Why? Is he better now? It's a series of questions. Then we can use the question mark to end a tag question. For example, we have never seen that, have we? Or they are not doing well, very well, are they? So question marks are used in such cases. 
Then there is something you need to note. Don't use a question mark at the end of a question in a reported speech. For example, she asked me where he had stayed. This is correct. It is wrong to say she asked me where he had stayed, and then you put a question mark. In reported speech, you have already changed what ordinarily should be a question into a statement is reported speech. But if we, uh, if we are saying the direct words of this speaker, you know, she said to me, then we put a comma and then we come with quotation mark, you know, where did he stay? Then that's a question mark. And then we enclose, we end it with quotation mark. But this is reported speech. So you don't need a question mark. All right. All right. So let's now move ahead. Let's look at the uses of the exclamation mark. The exclamation mark, as we earlier mentioned, is used to express strong feelings or emotions such as shock surprise, anger, or a raised voice. We saw where you can use it for emphasis and so on. You can use it to give a command, all right? You can also use it after interjections or uh, you can use it after interjections or exclamation. An interjection or exclamation is simply a uh, a statement expressing uh, very strong feelings. Now let's look at examples, command, stop. So you put a, an exclamation mark, sit down. John, don't touch that, help. Hello, how are you? Good night, please help me. You know, whenever you, express an idea or you express, uh, you give an information, you give some information or other, and you do that with some powerful feelings, uh, you require an exclamation mark. Ahem, you know, you call someone, can I make a suggestion? That's question. Boo, they shouted, get up. All right, so such shout is indicated with an exclamation mark. And this uh, sort of command, get off, is also indicated with an exclamation mark. You did a great job. That also requires an exclamation mark. How interested, how interesting this film is, you know, you are expressing admiration or joy or surprise whenever you express such strong feelings, you indicate that with an exclamation mark. What a gorgeous room. The meal was so good. She's such a quiet girl. All right, so those are instances uh, where we use the exclamation mark. Okay, so let's uh, go, let's move further. And now we look at the uses of the comma. We use the comma to separate a series of words, nouns, adjectives, verbs, or adverbs in a sentence. For example, Tom, Anna, Jim, and Richard went for a meeting. So we use a comma to separate Tom, Anna, and Jean. Then the other one, of course, takes a conjunction. Second example, David is an intelligent, loyal, and hardworking employee. So you can see exactly uh, how we use a comma to separate these adjectives, intelligent, loyal, and hardworking employee. Number two, 
you can use a comma to separate a series of phrases in a sentence. For example, John completed his work, packed his bags, polished his shoes, and went to sleep. So we can see how we used uh, how we, we can use a comma to separate, you know, the, a series of phrase, phrases or clauses, if you like, in a sentence. Then we can use the comma also to separate the parenthetical elements. That's a part of a sentence that can be removed without changing the meaning of the sentence. For example, David, the head of the school, has been absent for the last three days. Of course, this is what we call uh, an appositive. You know, David is the head boy of the school, and the head boy of the school is David. So we separate this with a comma. If we remove the head boy of the school, the sentence still remains correct. We can say David has been absent for the last three days. So the head boy of the school can also be put in parentheses if you like. So commas are used to separate this piece of information that just gives additional information about the subject. Then number, number four, we use the comma to separate the quoted parts from the rest of the sentence. The great, for example, the great leader told the crowd, comma, I will fast till death until our demands are met. I will fast till death until our demands are met. So these are the direct words of the leader, you know. And so these direct words are, are enclosed in quotation marks, opening and closing. And then we, we, we separate the, the first part of the sentence with a comma. The great leader told the crowd, comma, I will fast till death until our demands are met, full stop. And so that is another use of the comma, especially if you are writing a story or a novel or a fiction, a fictional a, a narrative, you know, where you incorporate dialogue, conversation, you know, between characters. You use comma to always separate parts of the sentence and to separate the quoted parts uh, from the rest of the sentence. All right. So now we can look at other uses of the comma. All right. To separate a series of words, we have seen that. See, listen, and be silent, and you will live in peace. Do you want some cakes, candies, or ice cream? So we use a comma to separate a series of words. We can also use a comma to connect two independent clauses. It's an old car, but it's very reliable. It's an old car, comma, but it's very reliable. I was feeling hungry, comma, so I made myself a sandwich. You know, so you can use a comma to connect two independent clauses. Number three, you can use a comma to set off introductory words, phrases, or clauses. Yes, comma, I will be there. You know, you start, you introduce the statement with yes. Yes, comma, I will be there. Thanks for reminding me. Second example, having finally ar arrived in town, comma, we went shopping. You know, that's the introductory part of the of the of the sentence and then we separate it with a comma we set up the introductory words with a comma the same thing happens if you are addressing someone if you are saying for example jane kindly bring me a glass of get me a glass of water or ma what shall we have for dinner? All right. So when you mention someone's name, 
to draw the person's attention and then you are saying something else to the person. Of course, you use a comma to uh, set off those introductory words. Another use of the comma is to separate the parenthetical elements. We have already talked about that. For example, football, which is a popular sport, is very good for health, which is a popular sport is a parenthetical element. If we remove it, the sentence will still remain uh, meaningful. If we remove that, we will have football is very good for health. Then a second example, my grandmother, comma, old and sick, comma, never goes out of the house. You see, so old and sick is a, par a parenthetical element because is it gives additional information to my grandmother. If we remove old and sick, we can still say, my grandmother never goes out of the house. But old and sick gives additional information to probably give the listener insight into uh, the reason for her staying indoors. Number seven, we can use the, the comma to set off phrases uh, to express contrast. For example, money is a good servant, but a bad master. So we use a comma, money is a good servant, comma, but a, a bad master. It's similar to, you know, separating or con connecting two independent clauses that we earlier mentioned. Let's look at a second example here. The golden age before us, not behind us. So in contrasting two ideas, we use a comma to set off phrases that express such contrast. Number eight, to avoid confusion. You know, for most, the year is already finished. You know, so when we want to give some clarification, I saw that she was busy comma, and prepared to leave. So when you want to clarify certain things, you can use uh, a comma in that way. To separate the quoted past, we earlier saw that. For example, I don't think you should do that, comma, he said. So here, the quoted, the quoted past are, I don't think you should do that. And then we, we, we separate that part of the sentence from the rest of the sentence. The next one, he asked, comma, do you want to go with me? So we have earlier said that you can use a comma to separate the quoted parts from the rest of the sentence. Number 10, to set off expressions that interrupt the sentence flow. This, after all, this comma, after all, comma, is a company which is awash with cash. So after all is an intervening uh, expression here. So we can set it off, uh, you know, so that the flow of the sentence is maintained. And this is similar to the parenthetical element we saw earlier. Of course, if we remove after all, the sentence still remains uh, correct. This is a company which is awash with cash. After all, we, we may decide to shift that to the end of the sentence. Then another example, on the other hand, comma, many women choose to go out uh, to work, all right? On the other hand, comma, so we have seen uh, examples we have seen uh, other uses of the comma. Now, again, we let's further look at the uses of the comma. We, we look at the purpose here, use a comma after an expression, all right? Most certainly, that's an expression. You can borrow my pencil. You know, in this case, you are, bringing in what we call uh, um, 
what of course is can be looked at introductory words, you know, most certainly, you know, most certainly. And in this case, it indicates uh, the speaker's commentary on what he is saying. The speaker is saying you can borrow my pencil, but is emphasizing that he's giving you the assurance most certainly that, you know, you can come with other, quite frankly, you know, sincerely speaking, you know, frankly speaking, and so on and so forth. So expressions like that are, are always uh, set off with a comma. Then add a comma when a participle uh, phrase is used. Uh, for, for example, walking slowly, comma, I could see the beautiful flowers. This, Walking slowly here is a participial phrase or a participle phrase, if you like. Then the next purpose of using a comma is to include a comma when an adverb clause is used. You know, for example, after we eat, we should leave for our trip. After we eat is uh, an adverbial uh, clause. Then you can use a comma to separate parts of a date. For example, Tuesday, comma, May 2, comma, 2012 was when I graduated. So you can you use a comma to separate parts of a date. Then you can add a comma when two separate sentences are combined. We purchased some cheese and we purchased some fruit. You see, these are two simple sentences that we join together to form a compound sentence. And of course, a comma can be used. Now, when we discuss semicolon, you, can, you will discover that we can remove the and here and the comma and we put a semicolon. We purchase some cheese, semicolon. We purchase some fruits, all right? Then we can use a comma to set off quoted words we have earlier mentioned that, I think it is a great idea, comma, said Clark. So this uh, emphasis have been to actually give you greater insight into the uses of the comma. And that brings us to the uses of colon and semicolon. You know, colons and semicolons were initially used to express pauses longer than a comma and shorter than a period. Of course, the colon consists of a, you know, two dots and the semicolon consists of a, a dot and a comma underneath. Now let's look at the uses. You, you, you can use the colon to introduce lists, series, quotations, and explanations. For example, he was going to buy three things. Okay. Let me use the pointer here. All right. He was going to buy three things, then we put a colon. What are those three things? Chairs, tables, and utensils, all right? Then John wrote, we put a colon. I wish you a Merry Christmas. All affection and best wishes to you and yours. So these are direct words of of John, we can use a colon to indicate that. John wrote, you know, another way of doing that is to separate the quoted parts with a comma, which we earlier saw. Then we can alternatively use a colon to do that. The second use of the colon is to separate independent clauses. For example, they will not make it colon. The storm is too strong. Now, this second uh, clause gives us the reason or explanation for the first. They will not make it. Why? The storm is too strong. All right. We can use colon also to show emphasis. For example, he was there for one person, his mother. We want to express, to emphasize that this one person uh, for whom he was there uh, was the mother. 
He was there for one piece, emphasis his mother. Secondly, you have two choices. Then we put a colon to emphasize the importance of the two choices. You have two choices, colon, finish the work today or lose the contract. It's a very powerful emphasis. Then we can use the colon to separate units of time. Sophia set her alarm clock for 6.30 a.m. So six colon 30. So we can use colon to um, separate units of time. And then the semicolon. The semicolon can be used, of course, you can, I want you to look at the, very, the signs, look at the colon here, two dots, and then look at the semicolon, a dot with a comma underneath. The first use of the semicolon is between items in a list or series when the items themselves contain commas, you know? So here, there are eight members on the team. Then we put a colon, two from China and Japan, semicolon, three from France and Spain, semicolon, two from Brazil, Brazil and Chile, semicolon, and one from India, full stop. All right. Then another example, we visited Thailand, Vietnam, and Singapore in spring, semicolon. Germany, France, and Italy in the summer, semicolon, and South Africa in the fall. So in this case, you know, we use the semicolon to separate items in a list or in a series when the items themselves contain commas, all right? Don't forget we use commas to separate words in a list. But here we are using semicolon to separate a series of words or items in, in the list. When these items themselves uh, have separate groups, you know, that are also separated uh, by commas. Then the second use of the semicolon is to separate two independent clauses while still demonstrating that a close relationship exists between them. I earlier mentioned that when you uh, use a conjunction to connect two independent clauses, you have the alternative of using the semicolon. Let, let's look at this. They came all the way home, semicolon. Even so, they all knew they had to go back once more. All right, so semicolon is used in, you know, joining these two clauses together. Second example, my daughter is a teacher, semicolon. My son is a doctor. Alternatively, we can say my daughter is a teacher and my son is a doctor, or my, my daughter is a teacher, but my son is a doctor. So you can use a conjunction uh, or you can use a semicolon, all right? So now let's, let's uh, move on. We are now going to use a, a look at the uses of the apostrophe. The apostrophe, you can see the sign of the apostrophe here. We can use the apostrophe to show contractions of words. For instance, aren't, aren't, that means are not, can't, cannot, couldn't, could not, didn't, did not, he or he would, I'll or I will, have or I have, who are or who are, wouldn't or would not won't or will not. Of course, so when we have some, uh, when we contract or shorten words, so we use the apostrophe to indicate short forms. For example, it's raining outside. We use the apostrophe between it and s to indicate that i is missing. 
Instead of saying it is raining outside, we say it's raining outside. The second example is I'll be there. Instead of saying I will be there, you can say I'll be there. I haven't met him before. Instead of saying I have not met him before, I haven't. And apostrophe is used to shorten words in this manner. Another use of the apostrophe is to indicate possession. You know, we call it the possessive apostrophe. For example, the children's room, you see, that's the room belonging to the children, the children's room, the men's work, the women's club, a car's engine. The girl's hands were chapped by the coal. The cat's toy was missing. Then another use of the apostrophe, of course, when we uh, have to indicate possession too, but uh, the, this comes after the S. The other one, when the subject is singular, of course, the apostrophe comes before S. But if we are indicating possession uh, that uh, how, has to do with a plural, um, a plural subject, then the apostrophe comes after S. For example, boys ball, which means you are talking of two or more boys. Baby's shoes, lemon's acidity, student's bag. Two girls' dresses. The table's legs were all wobbly and needed repair. Cherry stones can break your teeth if you are not careful. People are prepared to pay high prices for designers' clothes. So these are instances of the use of the apostrophe. Then let's look at more examples of the apostrophe use. Number one, there's Chris at the door. Instead of saying there is, you say there's Chris at the door. She couldn't stomach any more lies. Instead of could not, we shorten it with an apostrophe. She couldn't. He is not a nerve. Instead of saying he is, he's got a nerve. Instead of saying he has got a nerve. For it's coming for us. Instead of saying it is coming for us. Five, he met Millie's gaze. So this is a, a possessive apostrophe. Six, they looked like actors' clothes. Also possessive apostrophe. Uh, when it comes after S in a plural uh, now. Seven, he listened to his father's re reply. All right, so it is apostrophe before S because this is a singular now. It was a women's meeting. All right, so these are examples of how we use the apostrophe in sentences. Now we come to the hyphen and the dash. Of course, you can see that the hyphen and the other two types of dashes, they are interrelated. The smallest of them is the hyphen and it is used uh, you know, in hyphenating a compound word, for instance. For example, five year old, we have five hyphen year hyphen old. So that's one way of using the hyphen. The hyphen is the smallest dash. Then we have the one that follows the hyphen that is often called the end dash. Of, of course, the end dash is used, you know, in dates, for example. She worked here from 2015 to 2019. Now, we use this end dash 
in place of two. We may remove the end dash here and we put two T O there. She worked here from 2015 to 2019. We may decide to use a dash uh, uh, to there. So if we want to use a dash, we use the end dash. Then the third type of dash is the M dash, and it is used uh, in joining some groups of words. For example, Bob was tired, dash, exhausted, really, dash, but knew he could not rest, All right? So we use the M dash to connect uh, relatively longer expressions. Remember that the hyphen is used in connecting words, uh, you know, for instance, in a compound now, five year old, you know, if you are talking of a five year old child, you know, then you hyphenate it in this way, all right? So let's move further. Let's look at the uses of the hyphen and the dashes. Now, let's begin with uh, the hyphen here in the center. The hyphen is used. The hyphen is used to form hyphenated words. For example, he was tall and cute and he was tall and quite good looking. So we put a hyphen between good and looking. Now, I have uplo uploaded a video on compound nouns, rules for using compound nouns. So you will see examples of hyphenated compound nouns as one of the types of compound noun, hyphenated. Then the second use of the hyphen is to link prefixes to words. For example, the cooperation between the two is minimal. So in cooperation, we use hyphen between CO and operation, all right? And we have other instances of where we have a prefix and then we use a hyphen to link the prefix to the word. Number three, we use it in numbers. For example, at 22, he is just beginning to find himself. So 22, we put a hyphen between 20 and two. Number four, to indicate word breaks. Do you ever read 20th century literature? So 20th century is hyphenated here. Then the next, we look at the end dash. And the first use of the N dash is to express a period of time. He lived in this town from 1998 to 2009. We use the N dash to connect 1988 and 2009. As I earlier mentioned, you were used to, you know, he lived in this town from 1998 to 2009. Alternatively, we use an N dash in this way. Number two, to indicate a range of numbers, you could choose between two numbers from one to 50. So in this case, the N dash is used in place of two. Three, used with scores, we can use it in scores. The red team won three to one in this match, three to one, all right? The fourth use of the N dash is to indicate distance. For example, Europe to USA is a long flight. So when we are talking of a distance, you know, Lagos to Abuja, all right, London to Paris. So in that case, we use the N dash as well. 
Then we look at the M dash, which is the biggest of the dashes, the longest, if you like. Now, the first use of the M dash is to show a break in a sentence. For example, please call my supervisor. Dash, John Wick, dash on Friday. In this case, you are using it to break, uh, to show a break in a sentence. Two, marking of unimportant words, you know? For example, to get to New York from here, dash, you are heading there, right? Dash, you need a car or a train. So in this case, you are giving some additional uh, information that actually come as a sort of afterthought. This resembles the para parenthetical element we earlier talked about, which we could use commas to set off as well. The third use of the M dash is to create emphasis. For example, my mom loves fish. Dash, my dad loves beef. See, so you use M dash in this way to create emphasis. Number four, to indicate a sudden change of thought. For example, I had a great vacation in, in Bali. Oh, is that your dog? He's so cute. See, so that's a change uh, of thoughts in that manner. That means you started talking about a subject and then you, you divert to a different subject. So let's now move further to look at the uses of the quotation marks, all right? Now we have some, uh, the US writers and UK newspapers use quotation marks in a certain manner and UK publishers use quotation marks in a different manner. Well, as a writer, you have the right to choose uh, the style you want, but you need to be consistent. If you are using the American style, in writing, you will consistently use that. For example, she shouted, she shouted, get out. So now the direct words of this lady, she uh, is, you know, indicated with the quotation mark. What she actually said was get out. And you can see the quotation marks. Another example, he asked, did you call me, sir, just then? You know, you can see the quotation marks. So in this American style, you see the double quotation marks uh, used uh, for the main uh, quoted words, the main quotes, and then they use the single quotation marks for the enclosed quotes. That is quote, quote within the quote. All right. Of course, some, you know, also use the quotation mark in, in to indicate a word. He sells fresh fish. That's in this case, uh, that's to indicate some, some doubt, you know. He sells fresh fish. In this case, is like, you know, a tongue in the cheek kind of statement. Fresh here is really not fresh in the real sense of it. So you put the quotation mark to indicate that. I keep finding M and M's with W on, right? So whatever that means. All right. so. Then the other kind of style, she shouted, get out. So here we, we find the single uh, quotation marks used by UK publishers. Another example, he asked, 
Did you call me sir just then? So in this case, the main quotation, the main quote takes the single quotation marks while the, the, the minor quote that is enclosed within the quote takes the double quotation marks. So take note of this slight difference between the American and the British use. Okay, so let's move ahead. Talking about the quotation marks, you can see the American and the British, uh, you know, compared here or contrasted if you like. Now the main quote, talking about the American style, the main quote is marked by the double quotation sign and the second quote or quote being quoted is marked with the single quote sign. We earlier saw this, but let's look at other examples. Don't forget, said John, as Mr. B said, is Mandarin, not Margarine. All right, so in this case, you can see that the main quotes are with the quotation marks. Then we, periods and commas are generally included within the quotation mark whether they are part of the original quote or not. This, part, this practice is known as full stop quoting, you know, the American way of doing that. For example, he insisted that the stick, uh, the steak had been burned beyond recognizability. He insisted that the steak had been burned beyond recognizability. So here we, we, you find the quotation marks used for this statement, even though it's uh, the incomplete expression. He told her, comma, I don't know. You see the double quotation marks. Now let's look at the British style. One, the primary quote is marked with a single quote and the second marked with double quote. For example, don't forget in single quote, said John, as Mr. B said, it's man Mandarin, not Margarine. You can see the second quote uh, taking the double uh, marks. Number two, commas and periods are kept outside the quotation mark if they are not part Commas and periods are kept outside the quotation mark if they are not part of the sentence, a practice known as logical quote. For example, he insisted that the stake had been burned beyond recognizability. So you can see. The second example, he told her, I don't know. All right, so that is uh, how it works in the British way. So, and that brings us to the end of the, the video. We have been looking at quotation marks in English grammar and I believe we have been able to look at it from various angles and uh, I hope you have learned some, some things that will be useful to you, that will help you to improve, you know, your punctuation, your writing skills. I believe and I hope that with what we have really discussed in this video, you'll be able to punctuate your writings correctly when next you write. The various punctuation marks, we have looked at them. We have also looked at their various uses with copious examples. All right? So this is really where we draw the curtain in today's video. Thank you for being part of today's episode. 
If you have not subscribed to the video, kindly do so. Click on the bell icon as well so that whenever I upload new videos on this channel, you will receive instant notifications. If you have any comments or any suggestions, or probably there's a topic you have in mind that you might want me to discuss, of course, you can also uh, leave the suggestion. I want you to know that this video, this lesson is in direct response to a subscriber's request. And I want to really uh, give a shout out to that subscriber. And I did promise that I would do a video on punctuation marks as requested by this uh, very dear and important subscriber. And that I have done in this video. And I hope that what I have done will actually be satisfactory to our subscriber and to others. Once again, I want to thank you for being part of today's episode. See you in the next video and bye-bye for now.